Okay, so now we'll extend the analysis of a reactor to one that includes some baffles. So these are regions that will um, essentially be impermeable, and so the flow has to go around these baffles, and that will cause some mixing, and it will um, affect how the reactor works. And so we'll um, go over to... And the geometry is set up like this here. Um, it's basically a square with these two points, and these are two rectangles. So I uh, have the two rectangles added like this, and they have uh, these dimensions. So um, the definitions, I think, are pretty much just the same that we used last time. And we got, well, yeah, just make sure your the boundary probe is set up right. Although, if you just modify the analysis that you did previously by putting in these two rectangular regions, you should be good. Okay, so the thing you need to be aware of, though, is when you put in these, um, these two square regions, we want them to be no flow. And so there are a couple of ways that you could do that. You could go to the Darcy's Law um, interface and you could put in another fluid and matrix property and you could define the permeability of these regions to be very low. That would certainly be possible and perhaps uh, to some extent that's more realistic. But we could also say, well, these things are just, the permeability is low enough, so there's really no flow through them at all. And then a simple way of doing that is just to omit these regions from the analysis altogether. So what I did was to, uh, when, I'm, when I put in the Darcy's Law interface, I simply select this region here, everything but these two rectangles, and use that. And I do the same thing for transport of dilute species. And then when I set up the mesh, I do the same thing. Um, and here, actually one thing too that I should point out, when I set up the mesh, I did use the, uh, specify the edge here as having a, a denser mesh, a denser number of points than um, would be would occur with the default and the mesh that I use uh, for the rest of the region is a finer mesh a bit finer than what you would get from the default but the, the main thing that I wanted to point out here is that when I set up the mesh here for the triangular elements uh, the default is that it's remaining and that'll mesh everything including these regions here but if I instead select domain and just select this domain, then when I generate the mesh, I get this. And so basically, this, these regions are not participating in the analysis. The calculations are not conducted here, and so that requires that the flow occurs, uh, flow basically goes around these regions. Okay, so that's, I think, a better way to set it up. It certainly uh, doesn't do the calculations in these regions where nothing's happening, and that, I think, makes sense for this particular problem. So we go and analyze the flow, and um, this gives us the pressure distribution, and then we go and do the transport. And this will still be a step rate test, where we've got the fluid coming in here and it's going to go out here but now these baffles are in the way so we'll get some uh, effect of that and so what we can see happening is that some of the flow goes around this little gap here and that's the first flow to leave but then some of it goes around this baffle and comes around and then leaves as kind of a secondary pulse. Okay, so, um, you know, it makes sense that these baffles would cause some diversion of the flow and that that would uh, affect the distribution of things. And so let's take a look at uh, the residence time distribution. 
looks like this now. So this peak here is the first arrival of the concentration. So that's the, the, the mass that goes around the top and first comes out. But then the, the mass that goes around that bottom baffle, it comes out here as this second peak. So this kind of thing is pretty common to see where you have um, flow paths that are fairly complicated. We take just a, a pretty simple um, configuration uh, and because of the geometry of the flow path, it becomes fairly complicated. Now the cumulative RTD looks like this. Um, here's that first pulse and then it levels out and the second pulse. And by the end of the simulation, we're here a little bit above 90% of the concentration that we started with. Okay, so we can go and do the analysis and this setup here of these analysis is it, it's essentially the same equations and we'll apply them here. Uh, first of all, the let me clear this stuff out. This curve E from F um, in in this analysis, I'm calculating E from F and just making a table of those numbers. And that's what I have here. Plot it up. And there's the E function calculated from F function, which is the same plot that we just saw. <coughs> now, I'm going to integrate the E function and integrate this function. And that will give me the total normalized mass. Basically, the mass that's come out normalized to the mass that's come in. So if I calculate that, I get 92%, 0 0.92 uh, ratio. So 92% of the mass uh, that has come in has left uh, by the end of the simulation. The mean residence time, what I'm doing now is taking this integrand and normalizing by this 0.92. Because I need to scale this to the um, amount of mass that has indeed uh, left the system. So when I do that calculation, uh, I get that the mean residence time is 938. So this is remarkable because this is really quite close to the result that we got last time. And what we're saying is that the mean residence time is right about here. So it's kind of between these two peaks. This is much higher, but I guess it's skinnier. And then this peak is shorter, but broader. So this is kind of, if we, if we integrated this area, it would be the same as integrating that area. That's what we mean by the mean residence time. Now we calculate the variance and here we're using the mean residence time. We integrate that and this is the variance. So the standard deviation squared. And we can take the square root of that number and get the standard. So here's the standard deviation calculation and what we get is the standard deviation is about 400. So remember, this is this whole calculation is a, a measure of the spread of the uh, distribution. And so here's the, the mean and the standard deviation goes out 400 fr from about, I, I guess, to about, if the mean is about 900, the standard deviation is from here to about there, plus or, plus or minus one standard deviation. OK, so I think we I think the, re the interpretation of that is fairly reasonable. The skewness, um, we put in the uh, value for the um, variance that we got from the previous calculation. And we've got the mean residence time there. So we can calculate the skewness. And it's um, positive uh, skewness, so there's a tail. And uh, it's it's this uh, this value here. We can also use this volume calculation, where uh, Q and F are defined up in the definitions, and the volume here is um, 
is 1.02. So um, that's giving us an estimate of the volume. And, and indeed, the volume of the total region, is, let's see, the volume of the total geometry is 1. So it's a pretty good measure of that. But remember, uh, the actual volume is a bit smaller than that uh, because of because these regions are are not utilized so these shouldn't be included in the volume so this is actually a slight uh, overestimate of the actual volume of this region